I make maps. I make maps of South Florida's vulnerability to sea level rise. So I get this question all the time. Sea level rise is an impact of climate change. And the views on climate change are very polarized. Let's do some myth busting so we can get our facts straight. Myth number one, there is a debate about global warming. Well, there is a debate, but where? It's purely in the popular media, not among us scientists. 97% of peer-reviewed scholarly research agrees that global warming is happening now, and it's caused by us humans. There is uncertainty about how fast and how high sea level and temperatures will go up, but the direction up is certain. Myth busted. Myth number two. Florida's coastline has always been the same. Mm -mm. The range in sea level over Earth's history is huge, greater than the Bank of America Tower down the road. If you guys can imagine that sea level now is up on the 30th floor, then during the last ice age, the oceans were on the ground. And before that, when the ice in Greenland and Antarctica was melted, the oceans were on the roof. So how do these vertical changes translate into the horizontal movement of the shoreline? Check out this global view of Earth, of Florida, during the last ice age, right there in the target. Florida is so freaking fat, <laughs> right? <laughs> We're living on a sliver, a sliver of what Florida once was. And we try to control the shoreline. We build seawalls and we dump sand on the beach. That didn't stop those high energy waves in Fort Lauderdale last Thanksgiving when they cut A1A from four lanes to two permanently. We can't control our shoreline. Myth busted. Myth number three, we can build a wall to protect us. Like the Dutch, right? No. The water will just creep, creep from beneath us because the land below us is made of limestone, which is essentially a coral sponge. Now this wet underground sponge is also a storage. It's a storage. What does it store? Our water supply. And it's not too far below us. In some places, it's just a foot or two down. So if you can imagine that below us right now, there's a place where our underground fresh water supply meets the salt water coming in through the seafloor. This is a boundary, and it goes very far inland. It's wedged in underneath. And what happens with sea level rise is that this gets wedged further and further inland, and it lifts our water supply closer and closer to the ground to where it can overflow especially when we have heavy rains, because we depend on that ground for storing the rainwater. And there's another problem with this salt water coming in, and that's with our water quality. Salt water contaminates our coastal wells. This is already happening in Hollandale, where they've had to move several wells inland. So there you have it. Building a mile-high wall around Miami will not protect us from flooding, and it won't protect our water supply. Myth busted. <laughs> Myth number four. Reducing emissions will fix the problem. Even if we cut off all emissions today, no more electricity, no more driving cars, guess what? We're still committed to a certain degree of increased temperature and sea level rise. Look at how dramatically the carbon dioxide in our atmosphere has shot up since we started burning fossil fuels. There's a time lag, an accumulation 
Earth's systems can't keep up. CO2 traps more and more heat. Ice melts. Warming oceans expand. Sea level has a long way to go before it's caught up to the CO2 that's already in the pipeline. This Whole Foods in Miami Beach has made the news for the past few Octobers. And it's not because of their solar panels and their hybrid bus stop. These efforts to reduce emissions are what we call mitigation. And the problem is that we're at ground zero. We're seeing the first effects of sea level rise. Mitigation is not helping this Whole Foods when the water from the bay comes in through the drains into the streets during high tide. We need to prioritize actions called adaptation. These include protecting the shoreline, fortifying our structures, and moving out of high-risk areas. Mitigation is important, but to be safe from the sea level that's already locked in, we need adaptation. Myth busted. Myth number five, Miami will be a water world by the end of the century. This one is verified. Sort of. Miami will be a different place, that's for sure. But what was up with that recent Rolling Stone article that basically said, Miami is doomed? It described a pretend hurricane in 2030 that ravaged the city with a 24-foot storm surge. 24 feet is much, much higher than what models predict for the maximum surge in Miami Beach and downtown. Listen, storm surge and flooding are a big deal. But there's no need to be this dramatic. I can give you guys a realistic glimpse of what Miami will look like using the best available measurements of the height of land above the average sea surface. Let's start with the map of Miami today. What you see on the left is a view of the county, and on the right, we've, moved, we've zoomed in to what's in the blue box. Let's jump to 2030. This is what will be underwater with seven inches of sea level rise. I'll highlight it in red. Most of the land lost is wetlands, and wetlands are already pretty much at sea level. Also, the effect of sea level rise on wetlands is pretty complicated. But what about the developed land? These maps don't show the high tide or the drainage issues that we talked about. In 2030, I will be just halfway through the mortgage on my home. Yeah, soon. And with progressively increased flooding, we're seeing more mold in our homes and more disease-carrying mosquitoes outside. Traffic is getting worse. There's daily tidal flooding alerts, and cars are getting stuck in the street trying to drive through the water. The water is coming through the ground. It's causing seepage from our septic tanks. And after enough boil water notices, we all just drink bottled water. Businesses are affected. Insurance rates are limiting property value. Let's go to 2060. The high-end projection for 2060 is two feet of sea level rise. Here it is in red. By now, Miami Beach is in trouble. People are either moving away or moving to the mainland. Storm surge is getting higher and going much further inland. Hospital visits are on the rise because of the injury and illness from the storm surge, the flooding, and the environmental contamination. It's getting harder to maintain our roads because the ground is saturated with water more and more each year, and the foundations of our buildings are getting unstable. We're going to go to 2100, but first, I think we all need a drummer Jeff ah moment. Let's do it, right? Come on, guys. Ah, I, I needed that. <laughs> the projections for 2100 range from three to six feet. I'm going to stop doing red, because Miami gets really bloody. 
three feet doesn't consider ice melt, so it's a little unrealistic. And here's four feet. By four feet, more than half of the land in the county is inundated. Here's five feet. And we see that by six feet, we're transforming from part of the mainland to a string of islands. And by the way, the keys are long gone. US-1 is a road to nowhere. Let's keep going. Seven feet, eight feet, nine feet, 10 feet. This, it'll take hundreds of years to get here, but it's where we're headed. And there's good news. The good news is that we have time. We have time to prepare. What are you gonna do? <laughs> what are you gonna do? <laughs> Some people will leave. Some people will ignore it and tolerate the impacts as long as they can. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. This, increasing awareness. My dream is that we find a way to stabilize sea level before it gets to this. And in the meantime, we need to find creative and innovative ways to adapt to our moving shoreline. This is our home, this unique tropical paradise. It's our home. I grew up here, and I am going to grow old here. I am not leaving. I am not giving up. These are my two little boys. I made them stand in water levels equivalent to the sea level rise that they will see in their lifetime. I'm a scientist, and I'm a Floridian, but above all, I am a mother. <laughs> That's where I get my drive. That is where I get my drive to make a difference, and I am committed that Roy and George and all of our children have a future here in South Florida. Thank you.